Hello everyone and welcome to the Anime Void, I'm Brian, your host, and today I'm going to be reviewing the first volume of I'm Not a Succubus, a manga with story and art by Horitomo. To start off, let me start with reading the synopsis on the back so that you can understand what we're getting into and why I was drawn into it. Monster girls need love too, which is very correct. Adjusting to a new school is always rough, but that goes double for Sakura, a shy girl attending a Monster Girl Academy. Her new classmates include a Kiss Curious Harpy, a Sarcastic Lamia, a Cyclops with an eye for Sakura, and a Plain Spoken Centaur. Eager to blend in, Sakura declares herself a succubus. But can she keep up the ruse while fending off the touchy hands, claws, and scaled coils of her new friends? It's a long, hot school year. Now, so what brought me into that is the fact that it basically just sounded like a Yuri version of Rosario Vampire. And probably also, maybe more Slice of Life? And the thing is, I loved Rosario Vampire. I did especially love the Slice of Ice aspect. Though the anime itself did it wrong, but the manga was great, and I don't need the big story of Rosario Vampire in this. It would be cool if it happened, but I don't need it. And also, it's rated mature, so it's going to be lewd as hell. And yes, it is. But yeah, so I just thought that Sakura accidentally got enrolled into a Monster Girl Academy. Like there was some kind of clerical error, and it just kind of happened like that. But... No, that's not really what happens. She started living with her grandparents after having this illness and a tragic backstory tied to that where she was held back a year because she missed so much school. And then when she took the last year of junior high, everyone was a year younger than her and she didn't really have that connection with everyone else because they had been in school together for so long and all her other friends moved on. So it kind of sucked. So she was very depressed and eventually her grandparents just were like, hey, come live with us, start fresh, we totally understand your thing. And it's like, hey, if school doesn't work out, you can just work at the noodle shop. So wildly understanding grandparents, A plus there. So she goes to this new school in the countryside and it's not technically a monster only school. The monster girls or demi-humans as they're called, just prefer going to that school, but humans can attend. Humans do attend. It just so happens that in the very small class that Sakura is in, she is the only human. And so the lie about being a succubus isn't so much as her trying to protect herself from being killed by the monsters. It's her just being very desperate for friendship after having a few years of no friendship. And it's just kind of one of those lies that comes out when you're under pressure, especially since she said it very shortly after waking up from passing out. And that's also kind of the problem where this first volume lies. That gets old stupidly fast. That kind of plot always gets old stupidly fast. She told a lie and she is for various reasons due to either her own nervousness or people not giving her a chance or people continuing to misunderstand. The lie continues and the hole gets dug deeper and deeper until eventually we're going to have that whole liars revealed thing and by god that's going to be painful. It already is painful. It's not fun. This kind of plot is not fun. There are circumstances where the lie can work. Again, like if it's just to protect yourself, like like the anime Urumakun, that works. That lie works there because it's really to protect himself. There is a necessary reason for him to lie. Here, there's really no reason for Sakura to lie. It's fine that it happened, but the fact that it's going to be prolonged for Clearly a majority of the plot of this manga is going to be so, so tiresome. And there's a point in the manga where the school nurse, who is a succubus, decides to help Sakura keep this lie going. And sure, why not? Hole's already deep enough. Might as well keep digging. And at least with this, Sakura doesn't really have to fret as much, so it's not going to be as addressed hopefully, because she just got approval to have this ruse keep going on. So, again, hopefully those a little annoying points won't continue forward, which is why I am going to read and review Volume 2 to see how that goes, but right now I do have a very poor view of the manga based on Volume 1, which is really such a shame, because the characters 
are very enjoyable. I love their introduction. They're nothing groundbreaking for their archetype, especially when it's tied to these monster girls. We got the bird-brained harpy. We got the serious centaur. Lamia can go a bunch of ways, so I do kind of like the snarky, kind of lazy Lamia, where that is definitely a Lamia I've seen before. At least with Lamias, we have had a wider range of types of characters for them. And then we also have the shy Cyclops, who is shy about their eye. And it's like, again, these aren't groundbreaking. They are very tropey, but they are done well. I enjoy the characters. They don't come off as stock cardboard. They do come off as their own characters. And a lot of touches, especially to their outfits and just around them do lend itself to that. I do like how Hayate's The Harpy's outfit looks because you can tell since it connects at the side, it just drapes over her head and then is has simple latches on the side to keep it closed. It's that kind of attention to detail that's kind of amazing. So I do appreciate for that and that kind of detail definitely shows that a lot of interest and enjoyment went into making this, which is why I want to give it another try reading and reviewing the second volume, which should be coming soon since it's already out. So yeah, we got good characters, good attention to detail, annoying plot. Two out of three ain't bad so far. So hopefully volume two steps it up. But have you checked out the first volume of I'm Not a Succubus? If you have, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments below. And if you look forward to me reviewing the second volume, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And hit that bell icon so you don't miss an upload when I upload it. With all that said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time in the void. Later.